Hello, everybody. Uh, a few minutes before the hour, so I did to try and sign on a little bit early because as you probably re recognize, when I start the sale, I tend to lose track of the chat. So I lose track of who's joining, who's saying what, who's saying hello. So figured I'd come in a little bit early and see who we might actually have on the chat a little bit early. Uh, looks like uh, this overstuffed house is working, uh, which is, um, I think that's pretty much her norm. She said that last Thursday when she and I uh, split the Thursday slot, she well, what was the first time she hadn't worked Thanksgiving or a Thursday in quite some time. Um, so she's missing the sale tonight, but she will pick that up on the replay. Uh, but we've got uh, hopefully a good uh, chunk of people coming in for my specialty theme. We've got Nate coming in uh, from New Zealand, and uh, he's going to be with my wingman again this week, and we'll be helping uh, keep track of all the sellers. So at least somebody will be paying attention in the chat. So I appreciate that. And Jeffrey is here, the king of paying attention to the chat. Uh, if you are not, which I'm sure you all are, but if you are not subscribing to Jeffrey, he has his sales on Friday night. And I made a note because I can't remember which way it went. His sale uh, tomorrow night is actually in a half an hour early. Make sure, I hope that's still correct, uh, Jeffrey, if you want to uh, mention, if you want to correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, it's usually at 8 p.m. Eastern, and I think this time he said it's going to be 7.30 uh, p.m. Eastern. So he is starting a half an hour early tomorrow. Don't know if that impacts. Uh, Fatbird Finds usually does their thing after that. But from last I heard, they were still at 10 p.m. Eastern. So if you are making the rounds, uh, make sure you follow uh, Angela Marksberry. Uh, it's A Marksberry on Instagram. She is posting a weekly uh, schedule. And then Vintage and Vinyl, Katie from Vintage and Vinyl, uh, she's been posting daily uh, calendars. And I noticed Al Angela just did that uh, as well today. So there's a bunch of people helping all of us keep track of who's coming up, um, who's got sales. Thrifting Adventures is here. Hi, Stephanie. Her sales are on, oh, I didn't print that page out. I want to say hers are on Tuesdays at, 8 p.m. Eastern, I think. I'm sorry, Stephanie. Uh, I think, but I think you're starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, which is 5 p.m. Pacific. No, I think you're 4 p.m. Pacific. Anyway, drop your notes. Uh, oh, and look, this overstuffed house is on break. <laughs> so hello. Uh, Butterfly Nurse is here. Uh, Judy's joining us again. Hey, Judy. Uh, Ferns Find is joining us again. Uh, let's see, Rebecca Higgins, Suzanne McLean. Uh, she is a reseller, but she does not yet have a channel. So, uh, but thanks for joining us. Oh, there's Angela Marksberry. So you can see how to spell her name. So it's A Marksberry, and that's how you spell Marksberry. Because off the top of my head, I couldn't remember. Uh, the Frenchie mom has come back. She's forgiven me for doing an entire uh, fundraiser for Dachshunds, uh, but Frenchies are good too. So thanks for joining us again, Frenchie. Vintage Crazed, been seeing your name uh, lately quite a bit. So thanks you for joining us. Uh, and there's Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. So she, again, follow her channel. She does a different uh, live chats. She also posts pretty regular videos and she's been posting the, um, in her stories, she's been posting the calendar of events. Um, so you can definitely, there's multiple places to be able to find it. Uh, Tia Fain is re re returning again. Annette has returned back. Uh, I think we've got a name I don't recognize and I just lost it. Uh, Cindy Sanders Stone, uh, welcome. Uh, I think you might be a new name, so welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, let's see, so a couple of Dallas City Vintage. Glad you could make it. Uh, we were having time zone issues. He was probably having a hard time figuring out when my show, when my sales were. Uh, and I think there was something that I posted in my Instagram chat that he has his eyes on. So we'll see if uh, he's successful in picking that up. Jamie's joining us. Uh, Dawn is here, the uh, person behind the Dachshund fundraiser that uh, we, we ran. Uh, that was for just one more Dachshund rescue. So thanks, Dawn, for coming back on. Melody is here. She also said she's got uh, her eyes on something, and she's got some pretty fast internet. So she's going to be giving some people some competition uh, tonight. Uh, Sue joining us. So we got a great great turnout and appreciate all of you joining. Uh, most of the names, Laura Bemos is joining us. Welcome, thank, welcome back, Laura. Uh, most of the names I'm recognizing, uh, but the couple that I didn't, just making sure everyone's on the same page. Uh, pretty much if you're familiar with the live sale format across all of YouTube, this one runs pretty much the same way. Biggest difference is I only do a buy it now or a first to claim. I don't do the auctions or the, um, the uh, 
offer ups. So just be aware that when I give you a price and then give you the number, that is the price that you will pay. So it's the first person uh, that I see on my end, or in this case, it's going to be what Nate sees in New Zealand on his end. Uh, the first person we see is who will claim it. Um, so just be aware, you need to refresh your internet. As long as you keep it refreshed, you've got a pretty good chance to catch it. Even if you think your internet is slow, uh, sometimes keep uh, refreshing that internet, refreshing that uh, screen uh, helps quite a bit. If at any point you see people claiming with numbers that you haven't heard me say out loud yet, you're lagging and you're going to need to refresh your screen to kind of catch up. Uh, but, you know, we, we want to have fun here. We want to, everyone is having a good time. Uh, but that is the way this one works. All of the prices I give you are the prices of the item, not including shipping. So if you have never ordered from me before, if you've never claimed an item from me before, I need you to send an email to the email address that's on the screen uh, at the end of the sale um, and just telling me where you live. I will then send you an invoice with the total of the items you purchased plus a combined shipping total for everything that you purchased. And as soon as you pay the invoice, I will ship it out to you. I do, I kind of do it alone. I sometimes have a huckster helper, but she's not with me this week. Um, so it usually takes me a couple of days to get the invoices out and then a couple of days to ship everything. So I do apologize for any delays, but I do try and do it as quickly as I can. Um, I am not the machine that some others are like Jeffrey. I've seen how quickly he can crank out his invoices and his boxes. I uh, add, add, add an item to the shrine for him each time I see that, but uh, I'm unfortunately unable to do that. Um, but as long as I, hopefully as long as you know that in advance uh, and it's early enough before Christmas that if you're doing your holiday purchases, and there's some fun stuff tonight, uh, you would still hopefully get it in time. I will say the post office is being a problem again. Um, of all of the shipments that I sent for my sale last week, uh, they started going out on Friday. And I think of all of the ones I've shipped, only three were delivered when I checked earlier today. So and that's selling everything priority mail. So it's taken some time uh, for the postal service to get things out again. And it was a problem earlier in the summer, kind of seemed to have gotten better. Now, maybe not so much. So if you're you know buying from other sellers, keep that in mind too. Uh, you may, um, you may be seeing some delays that are completely outside of our control. Uh, Bemos is asking where I'm shipping from. I am shipping outside Chicago. So I am in the center of the country. So for the most part, uh, it shouldn't be like super, super long. I don't know. I'm outside Chicago and Jeffrey is uh, closer to St. Louis. I'm not sure if he's experiencing some of the delays, but a lot of uh, yeah, Jeffrey just said some of his packages um, haven't even scanned in. I don't, I don't think I've had any that weren't scanned in. What seems to be happening again, which hadn't been happening for a while, is it left my local post office. So it shows that it left and it shows that it was received at the regional distribution center uh, at O'Hare, which is just you know 30 miles from where I live. But then it's, it's nothing after that. So it's stuck in the massive regional distribution warehouse. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, so I am, I'm glad that I'm not the only one. I didn't think I was. Um, but yeah, so Carrie uh, saying uh, couriers are a hot mess. So yes, that does pretty much fit with 2020. I guess I falsely thought, because things did seem to be getting better. I think maybe it just people weren't shipping as much. And now that Christmas and holiday shipping is coming back in, um, you know, it's just straining the system. I mean, I just know I placed an, in, an order from Amazon and I uh, was tracking it. It was supposed to be here the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and it didn't show up. And so I checked on Friday, uh, it still didn't show up. So I checked online and it said, oh, it looks like your shipment is lost. I'm like, oh, okay. It didn't give me a tracking number or anything. It just said, it's lost. If you want a refund, go for it. I'm, um, okay. So, you know, Amazon is uh, not, not alone. Um, oh, and so it, let's see. So, uh, um, Misty, Thrifter Junker, Vintage Hunter, Misty is in Indiana. Um, so she's saying the same thing. So I don't know. I'm curious if, if Stephanie, what you're seeing, because you're on the West Coast. And I know that my shipments to California, I know you're in Washington, but I know my shipments to California obviously take the longest in general. Um, Las Vegas also takes a, a good time, I guess, crossing the mountains. So I'm curious, Stephanie, if you're seeing those types of delays too. But anyway, nothing we can do about it. I just want people to be aware, particularly if you're buying from me for the first time. I, I When I first started doing live sales, when all of these were still relatively new, people were thinking I was trying to scam them or for some reason I wasn't shipping, even when I could show them the tracking numbers. Um, you know, so I just want people to feel 
aware of what's going on and we'll we're just going to do our best um and i'll always send you the tracking number so you can check for yourself and uh yeah so tfa is saying three AB or ebay orders which haven't moved in days so it's it is all around uh we are all affecting the same thing so anyway uh so i think uh, we're going to go ahead and get things started you will have um uh, Oh, the other piece, again, most people would know this, but for some of the newbies, I've had a, this issue before. When you're commenting or when you're watching the chat, you know, the comments that I'm throwing up, you do need to be in the live chat. If you're on your computer, that shouldn't be a problem. You'll see it. But if you're on your phone, at least on an iPhone, you do need to be in the app. If you just try and run it through the URL, you know, through the uh, Safari app, um, web browser, you won't see the chat. And so there have been times where I've gone back afterwards and I realized people were throwing numbers into the comment section, which are not being monitored. So just make sure you should be seeing notes, uh, you know, all kinds of chats coming in. The last one I'm seeing is TFA and saying, hi, Katie. So you should be able to see, you know, these same notes uh, stacked over on the side. Um, that is where you need to claim the numbers. And we're gonna go ahead and get things started with my first Christmas item. I didn't say, I, I promoted the sale, but I don't think I said it for the start. This sale is a recovery sale uh, from some of the sales that I had before, particularly the Dachshund sale, which I'm still recovering from, and that was three weeks ago. Um, I tend to primarily sell uh, glass, porcelain, and pottery, which makes it very difficult to ship. This sale, nothing's gonna break. That's the theme. I always try and do some theme sales in the month and this theme sale is, it's not gonna break, it is not fragile. And I'm still gonna have to wrap things, but for the most part, all of these hopefully will be able to be easy to ship, including the first item, the Christmas tree dish. So this is a very heavy, a very heavy plastic. It is, uh, it has an original label on the bottom. It is from Celebrations by Sylvestri. And that is uh, made the Sylvester name. I'm familiar with it because it is a Chicago company, but I do want to say it's a pretty nationwide thing. Uh, this one was made in Taiwan, so not super old, but there is some age, probably from the 90s, uh, that this was this was created. It's just like a little candy dish, I'm assuming. Uh, you've got this very shallow, you know, uh, trinket, key dish, candy dish. Uh, the whole thing is solid plastic. All of the pieces you can see are molded onto it. And you've just got this little cartoony face selling a Sylvestri Christmas tree candy dish. And if you want some kitschy candy dish in your collection, you can have it for four bucks. So $4 for the kitschy uh, candy dish, four bucks by giving me number 68. And I just saw uh, Jeffrey's comment, which I think is absolutely hilarious. I tend not to put the word fragile on the outside because I do, I feel that that's just baiting them. Um, so yeah, I won't, I won't be uh, promoting this one, <laughs> anything more than that, uh, because, uh, you never know what they're going to do with those boxes and what exactly they could do. Cause if you tried hard enough, you could probably still crack the plastic. It could still, it could still break, but yes, he just has an adorable face. He's just a goofy little thing. Um, and I had to pick him up. I just thought he was fun. All right. The next item, as I mentioned, um, my helper this evening is Nate from New Zealand. And I never find anything from New Zealand. It is one of those cases that um, just doesn't come across very much. I don't know if anyone else uh, has anything, but if you follow me on Instagram, I posted this uh, set of coasters. If you're also new to my channel, you'll get used to the fact that I sell coasters a lot. Um, so this was a set of coasters that were manufactured in New Zealand. So manufactured by Jason Products, Auckland, New Zealand. It was distributed by a company in Rhode Island. So, you know, like it's, it's like a little gift shop, gift shop item, little box. It is just the bottom of the box. I don't have the plastic uh, cover to it, um, but it is a set of four of these thicker uh, paperboard um, cork backed coasters, kind of the Pimpernel style. But again, this one was, I wasn't familiar with the company, Jason. So I don't know if Nate can vouch for how great uh, Jason of a company is, uh, but it is a magpie uh, uh, poodle and Nate and I did a little, well, actually I'll just give it great credit to Nate and poodle uh, for doing a little research on what the bird was. Um, so it is a magpie and it's just, you know, attractive little set of coasters. So you get the four New Zealand coasters, my ode to Nate coasters, five bucks for the set of four coasters, $5. You can get them by giving me number 48. $5, number 48 for the New Zealand Magpie Coasters. 
All right. The next item I am bringing in is a um, a set. Uh, it was not purchased as a set. They were I purchased them at multiple times, but I uh, figured they felt that they kind of belong together, and I wanted to sell them together. And it's one of those cases that this is the time of the year people will want to use it, um, but you're going to have to be creative and maybe include it in your Zoom uh, thing, Zoom celebrations. You've got a set of floral organizers. So they're candle. Uh, it's a, these are a pair. And then you also have this one. So I decided to bring them all together. You can kind of see on the cover what this is. It's this little plastic ring, which you then fill with water. And it's like a little mini flower frog. Got this little mini flower frog on the top. So you fill this with water. You can put your uh, sprigs of flowers in there. You can see kind of on the box. They're low flowers. You've got a place for the middle to put the uh, candlestick. It goes all the way through. You see there's a hole in the bottom as well. And it just sits on an individual candlestick holder. So what I'm including in this lot is the uh, two boxes, which each have two in them. So you have four of the candlestick holders, uh, posy rings is what they're calling them. And then on top of that, for your formal dining table, you have this larger piece that also creates a flower ring. So you can keep it as a circle and put a floral centerpiece in the middle, plus have the flowers coming out, or you can make it like an S shape. So you can, if you have a long table, you can actually fill the table with the flower fashioner. Fashioner, yeah, I think I said that right. So you get all three boxes, Hey, that box is not square. There's actually a shape to it. Uh, you get all of those for the combo price of $10. $10 for the large floral fasteners and then the two sets of posy rings. 10 bucks by giving me number seven. $10, number seven for the set of flower rangers. And I had from my trusty wingman a note from uh, Nate that number 48 the coaster set goes to Karen Dondelinger. So thank you, Karen, for picking those up. All right. And it looks like number seven, the candle organizer, is going to go to four Sandy's lilacs. So thank you, Sandy, for picking up the floral arrangers. All right. The next item, I uh, think this is the one that... Uh, Dallas City Vintage uh, was after. It is, I'm going to do my best in trying to show it to you. It is a mixed lot of matchbooks. So it is a mixed lot of 23 matchbooks. And it is, um, there are some duplicates. So we've got, they're all vintage. The flies past the screen. So we've got multiples of the Grand Canyon. Uh, we've got multiples of... Glacier National Park. Have a pleasant visit. We've got an individual one from the Bicentennial. Happy Birthday America from Lou Malnati, so a restaurant one. Uh, we've got Sequoia Canyon, Kentucky State Parks, uh, Utah State Parks. We've got the Disneyland Hotel, Fort Wilderness Lodge. If you're the University of Illinois fans, you got the Illini Union and a random Playboy one celebrating Playboy of New York. So these are all, um, I didn't check every single one of them, but I believe all of them are in unused condition. This one is the Virgin Isle Hotel from St. Thomas Virgin Islands. But you've got um, a whole set of 23 vintage uh, matchbooks. I think I uh, Kentucky State Parks, I think I showed you that one. Uh, making sure I didn't miss any. Uh, anyway, you've got a mixed bag. Oh, I don't think I showed this one. Oh, Sequoia Kings, I think I did show that one. Oh, Polynesian, Polynesian Palace. Polynesian Hotel. I think this was, I don't think this is the one from Florida. The Polynesian, I think that's the Polynesian Resort. So Polynesian Palace. I don't recognize that address, so I'm not sure where that's from. But anyway, it is all 23. They are available as a lot for $5. 
Uh, so five bucks for all 23. Sorry, well, I put them all back in their bag. 23, $5 by giving me number 49. 23, $5, number 49. All right. Moving on to some metalware, which also may make some noise as it gets shipped, but it won't be breaking. It is a Ying Mi Company made in Hong Kong tea box. So you've got the galvanized tin on the outside, but the decorated top. Definitely has some age to it. It opens just in the middle. It really does. I think I did it once before. This little ring opens, which for right, right now does not want to open. Or maybe it doesn't open. It just looks pretty. So you've got a riser. If you've got a little vignette going with that kind of color, it's a reddish with an orange. It's a really pretty color. Or you keep it with the side predominant, you've got a very nice uh, primitive uh, look for the sides of the tins. But that is the decoration trademark uh, there right there in the middle. And you show the made in Hong Kong um, tin label. This is five bucks and five dollars for the uh, Hong Kong Chinese tin of tea empty five dollars by giving me number 52 five dollars number 52 for the hong kong tin and it looks like the last item number 49 was the matches went to laura bemos so thank you for laura for picking those up all right oh and kim got her mystery box today didn't see that kim was on here so uh welcome kim and if you hadn't heard, I mentioned the uh, Dachshund Rescue Fundraiser. Kim was the recipient of over 30 mystery boxes, which were donated by over 30 different resellers, many of which are joining us here tonight, uh, all being shipped to Kim. And she is going to be running. Uh, go ahead and drop in the notes, Kim. I think you said it's going to be Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern or 4 p.m. Eastern. I can't remember what time you said. Uh, she's going to be doing a premiere video of some of the unboxing uh, of some of the video or some of the uh, pieces that she got. So I think the last I talked to her, she'd already received 22 and she just received mine in the mail today. So I'm glad that hers, because hers was one of the ones that was missing. Uh, so I'm glad that hers, uh, hers made it through. All right. Uh, next item is a piece that I picked up and was supposed to go on to Etsy. Just never figured out a really good way to, to photograph it. And so sometimes that's how I determine what ends up going into our sales. So this is a, a signed piece by Young. Uh, it's dated 1985. You can see it's original, still has the little hanging uh, piece to it. But it is a little hanging. I mean, you wouldn't really, was, you wouldn't really say it was a marionette because it's very, it's two dimensional but it does have the dangling arms and the dangling legs. So you do have some movement. It kind of has that colonial Williamsburg 18th century soldier look uh, going on to him. Uh, and again, it is a signed piece from Young uh, from 1985. Kind of a cool piece, a little different. You know, basically I need, I need to be able to either hang it on a wall, but I wanted to be able to show the movement and I couldn't figure out a way to make the video. Uh, Etsy has video options now. Um, but I couldn't come up with a good way to do it. So it's been sitting in a box waiting to get listed. It doesn't break. So it's part of the sale. So we've got our little colonial um, mover dude, uh, original from 1985, and he is 20 bucks. So $20 for the colonial piece, uh, colonial uh, style, number 27. Jointed colonial dude, 20 bucks, number 27. All right. Uh, next item, something that totally will not break. Uh, how much was 52? I remember what 52 was. 52, the Asian tin was $5. Uh, TFAN, so that was $5 for number 52, the T tin. All right. Um, by definition, what cannot break? Paper. So if you followed my channel in the past, you'll know that I do a lot of community theater, interested in theater. My 50th birthday, I was supposed to do an entire uh, vacation in on Broadway, doing Broadway shows. Thanks to COVID, that didn't happen. 
Um, so we've, but I do still have a lot of theater memorabilia and pieces that at this point no longer have a place uh, to be displayed in my own office because I just have so much of it. So this is actually coming out of my own collection. It is a Belasco theater, uh, basically a playbill, but before playbill was a company and they were created on behalf of the theater as opposed to on behalf of the way playbill does them. Now they do them on behalf of the show. So this one is dated, oh, I had the date, I forget, got to write it down, 1907. Uh, so this is early days. You've got some great ads, some of them surprisingly in color. So you've got Watchmen Whiskey as an in color ad, but you've got just got some great ads in here. So, you know, perhaps Blue Ribbon, Why a Slip Scarf, uh, Gold Stripe Silk Stockings, uh, you know, a lot of most of the ads are black and white. Um, this one was for the show, The Return of Peter Grimm. So it does still have the show information in there. It's just the covers wouldn't be changed as often because it was promoting the theater. What I personally liked about this one was it gave the floor plan for the theater, which I thought was kind of cool. And then the back ad is beautiful. Uh, corsets ad, CB Olive Spirit Corsets. Uh, so that's one of the color ads. And then the very back cover is another color ad the tulip cigarettes. So you've got an early 20th century, basically a playbill, but before playbill existed and it won't break and it's easy to ship, particularly if it's all you get because I can send it media mail and it's six bucks. So $6 for the 1907 playbill, $6 by giving me number 40, $6 number 40 for the non breakable playbill. All right. Uh, next piece, getting into some textiles, because once again, textiles will not break. Uh, I came across these and I just thought they were kind of cool. Um, admittedly, not sure the best thing you're going to do with them, but if you've got a fun jacket or a backpack, these would look fantastic and would definitely be a uh, conversation starter. It is a set of patches that are all from Alaska and they're all from fire departments in Alaska. So you've got the North Pole Fire Department. Yeah, I thought perfect for coming up for Christmas. The Dillingham Vi uh, Volunteer Fire Department from Alaska. It says Alaska there on the bottom, Dillingham. We also have the uh, Matanuska Susitna Borough Fire Service of Alaska. I don't know if Joni is uh, on here, as she can translate her Canadian into Alaskan. Um, so you've got that one. This is the Kali Volunteer Fire Department from Point Lay, Alaska. Thought that was kind of cool with the, what would that be? It wouldn't be a manatee. Is that a, what's Shamu? No, Shamu's black and white. What would be an all white one? I can't remember what those types are. Uh, and then last one is the Antioch Volunteer Fire Department from Antioch, Alaska. All of these are in new condition. So it does not look like any of these have been stitched on. Some of them have like the little plasticky kind of background, which I don't know if that means that these are the type that you would iron on. I'm not really, I'm not really familiar with patches, so I'm not sure you necessarily, but the stitching on the front, they're all just super colorful and there are five of them. Thought they were super awesome. Pick them up as a set of five, do with as you choose. Uh, so Beth is, was it a great beluga? That's what it was. Thanks. Thanks, Ruth. It was a beluga whale. That's what I couldn't think of. Uh, so you get the set of five patches are available for the five different Alaska fire departments. You get a set for $15. So $15 for the five patches. And you can have those by getting, giving me number 19, number 19, $15. So it's $3 a patch for the five individual Alaska fire department patches. All right. Looks like we had a taker on the playbill uh, went to Melody. So thank you, Melody, for picking up the uh, playbill. All right. Um, it looks like number 19, the Alaska patches went to Stacy Brinkley. So thank you, Stacy, for picking up Alaska. Um, all right. The next item is a pair of candlestick holders, which maybe is a bad choice because I don't think the floral candle, the floral arranger is sold, but maybe you needed the candlestick holders to go with the floral arrangers. Maybe I should have made it a big, big lot. Uh, but anyway, so what these are, and of course I forgot it already. It is the, I think it was Havite, H-A-V-I-T-E 
is the name of this plastic. It's from the 30s. When I did the research on it, it said that they were, it was basically a contemporary product to Bakelite. So everyone knows Bakelite, but this is not Bakelite. It's literally Havite and it is stamped that you can kind of see, uh, you're not gonna be able to probably focus it well enough. You can see there's that little embossed thing at the top. Um, that is a big H within the rest of the letters in the middle of it. So you've got this pair of black Havite or Havite uh, material with then the chrome uh, color, the chrome metal uh, overlay to make basically a beautiful pair of deco candlestick holders. We've got the two candlestick holders of the Havite material. Um, they're actually known, this is maybe for uh, Laura Bemos's benefit. When I was doing the research, they were best known, Havite is best known for making early uh, poker chips. That is what the earliest poker chips were made out of before they were Bakelite, they were Havite. Um, so you've got Havite candlestick holders. Um, you get the pair of them for 10 bucks, $10, and they are number 35. $10 for the pair of black and chrome candlestick holders, $10, number 35. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, the last T10 didn't sell, but I had another T10, and maybe people would like one that's got more decoration all the way around it. Um, so this one is a teapot. T10, and it is originally uh, has the original logo on it that says Department 56, but it says tea leaves from Department 56. So I don't know if Department 56 sold food. I know Department 56 from like the little villages and things. So this was, I wasn't hundred percent sure of, but you can see it was originally retailed from Dayton's Marshall Fields Hudson's. Um, so it's got the barcode. This isn't necessarily super old, um, but it's just a cute, uh, nicely shaped because it's longer. It's like a rectangular shaped tin, decent height. Will look great behind, you know, some vignettes or, you know, probably could hold some recipe cards in there. Uh, just some general trinket, um, just kind of a nice all over decoration. And it's only four bucks. So $4 for the teapot tea tin and $4. And that gives you that by giving me number 54, $4, number 54 for the teapot. I'm assuming that because Jeffrey is wooting, uh, that he got the uh, he got the Havite uh, candlestick holder. So congratulations, Jeffrey, uh, for picking that up. Real Nifty Vintage gets the Havite. All right, I'll wait for um, Nate to give me the the person on fifty four because it looks like a bunch of people came in at one time. So I'll wait and see who he saw as the first the first person. Um, since we just talked about Jeffrey and I saw that Misty is on here, um, we did a little kind of a get together meetup in Kentucky, uh, at the end of June and, uh, we, where we met George for the antique nomad. Uh, so number 54 went to Bemos mercantile. So thank you, Laura, for picking that up. I will add that to the matches that you're getting. Look, I can even put the matches inside the tin. Look, that just works out perfectly. Nothing will break. Uh, anyway, we met at George the Antique Nomad. He was doing his first estate sale since what they, uh, he had been shut down. And one of the items I picked up was a, a fairly large stack of menus. Um, some of the menus I ended up keeping in my collection. I made a large framed collage out of a bunch of the menus that I had. These end up being the menus I didn't use. Um, ironically, because Jeffrey is here, these were also can looked at and considered for uh, Aaron because we had the Amtrak menus. So I've got a pair of menus, got the Amtrak dinner menu uh, with that laminated inside. And then we also have the luncheon menu from Amtrak with a slightly different color blue, also with the laminated inside. We also have uh, this one was Discover America from Union Pacific Railroad. So this was the coffee shop service on the Union Pacific Railroad. And you've got Union Pacific down there at the bottom. Uh, so that is just a one-sided card. And the last one in honor of, I think I saw Aaron was here and I think Joni did end up showing up here. So in honor of our Canadian brethren, the Canadian Pacific menu card, uh, Canadian Pacific dining car service, you also have uh, inside in both French and English, their luncheon and uh, their luncheon and dinner menu. Uh, so this one though, you can kind of tell, or hopefully you can tell, this is just the, uh, like the heavy grade rag paper where the Amtrak ones have that gloss to it, those are laminated. 
So you've got the four menus are available. I priced them at two bucks a piece. So you get the set of four menus for eight bucks, $8 for the four menus by giving me number 15, number 15, $8 for the four uh, train menus. All right. I mentioned that if you watch my show enough, you'll see a lot of coasters. Guess what? I've got more coasters because guess what? They won't break. I do have coasters that will break, uh, but they're not in this sale. So tonight I've got this um, basically pushing all of my, okay, I can do this, uh, pushing all of my Christmas uh, decor items because we're getting closer to Christmas. People already got their decor out, but you can never be too late adding Christmas geese to your Christmas decor. So this is a set of Pimpernel coasters. So the ones from New Zealand were Jason. This is that same style. So you've got the laminated with the cork back. This happens to be a set of six. The box has, has the Pimpernel and then the back of each of the coasters still have the Pimpernel made in England. So these are you know very nicely marked. And this box, unlike the Jason one, this one does actually have both the front and the back. So this is actually a nice gift giving condition, you know, for your, all of your friends who love their vintage coasters. So you've got a set of six vintage Christmas goose Pimpernel coasters. They are only six bucks for the entire set of six. And the number is 42, $6 number 42 for the Christmas goose Pimpernel coasters. And let's see. Number 15, the menus went to Joni at Vintagera. So we've got the Canadian Pacific menu heading back to Canada. They don't want to let it go. So enjoy it, Joni from Vintagera for picking up those menus. And yes, you can cook your Christmas goose or you could rest your drink on it, Jeffrey. That is what that is what uh, Christmas geese are good for. Um, so the next item, I saw a couple of people comment on it because this also was in my preview of, uh, Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm TH Mercantile on Instagram and the couple days, uh, up to and including the day of the sale, I will throw out some highlights of what I'll be including. And this one, um, got several comments on it. So what I'm including here is a set of four life magazine issues from the year of 1964. So they, I have actually many, many more uh, Life, Look, and Saturday Evening Post magazines. I'll be dealing with those later. Um, these, I happen to have four that were dated from the 1964 range. Uh, so I decided to include these in one lot. So the first one, you've got a uh, cover story of Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, this is the one with the most damage. Uh, the address was actually ripped from the cover, unfortunately. Uh, so that one actually has some damage to it. We then also have Oswald's full Russian diary. So you can see what era we are in. We are in 1964. This is from the July 10th issue of 1964. You also have one dedicated to General MacArthur who died in 1964. So this was his uh, obituary edition was the um, General MacArthur. That was April 17th, 1964. And then also the Warren Report. Um, also, this was October 2nd, 1964. So not entirely a themed you know, collection, but obviously we got quite a bit of Kennedy information in there. Um, but the connection really was, I happen to have four from 1964 and they are now available as a set. Um, the four, all four issues are available together, selling them as a set of four and I'm selling them only for 12 bucks. So $3 an issue for each of those um, Life magazines. If you're not familiar with that era, they were still in color, so you still would have ads in color. Uh, Canadian Club, you know, in the back cover. Um, just some great pieces of weather for your collection or to break it apart for your own, um, for junk journaling, et cetera. So it's $12 for the set of four magazines from 1964, $12 giving me number 60. $12 number 60 for the four issues of Life magazine from 1964. Uh, let's see. All right. Next item, I actually have several coming up uh, that fall into the same category. Um, this just happens to be the one that's within reach. So I'm starting with this one. Um, I had the opportunity of picking up a, well, let's be honest. I was purchasing from an online auction. 
there was an item that I really wanted in there. Uh, it was literally a, if you didn't know these existed, uh, there is such a thing as a Huckster license. They seem to be primarily uh, prevalent on the East Coast, mostly in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I have a handful of these from the teens up to the 30s, and they're either pins or buckles, or in some cases, they're larger placards that literally someone who was a huckster, which is a traveling salesperson, would need to have one of these licenses. I was purchasing one of the larger ones. I didn't want to have to pay for shipping just that, so I wanted to add some other things from the auction. And I picked up this box lot of items from Nabisco. So these all came out of a corporate office in Nabisco. This one happens to be a set, you know, a desk set. You can see that this little leatherette uh, holder, you know, would have sat on a desk and it holds both the letter opener. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a wear to it. Um, you can see the way these were set together. I think they were supposed to be set in where the letter opener sat on top of the scissors, but the scissors were used more often. So when I purchased it, they were stacked like this. And so the scissors had to slide out, scratching the surface of the letter opener. So you've got the letter opener um, and then you've got the pair of scissors, fairly long uh, pair of brass scissors. Uh, and absolutely, Jeffrey, you've, you, you're a man after my heart for the uh, Oreos. I do not need a tool to open my Oreos, but this could do some, this could do some damage. Uh, so the two pieces fit in here, the executive desk set of both the scissors and the letter opener in this little cool holder. I just never seen anything like it. So even with that little bit of wear, I thought it was kind of cool, um, but it is worn. So I'm pricing them only at nine bucks. So $9 for the set of scissors plus the letter opener plus the holder, $9 by giving me number 46. $9, number 46. Okay, so here's the here's the trivia question. How does everyone eat their Oreos? I will eat, I will, I have to rip them open. And so that's always a game, whether it ends up all on one side or if it gets split. And then I think I'm the weird one because then once I split them open, assuming that one side got all of the cream and the other side is completely bare, I eat the, I eat the bare side first. So I get rid of that because I want to end with the cool creamy part. That's just me. Um, but I, I know a lot of people think that's weird. I think they're supposed, you're supposed to go after the cream side first, but then I feel you're, you're finishing off with the dry, dusty, non-cream side, and I don't want to do that. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. I think everyone does it slightly differently. Um, I don't tend to dunk, dunk them in milk because then you, you run the risk of it disappearing and not getting it back, and I'm not willing to run that risk with my Oreos. And they must be double stuffed, by the way, um, just because. So, okay. Um, and Nathaniel, no problems. You do not have to be a fan of Oreos. God knows what they would do to them in New Zealand. You would probably turn them like healthy or something. So that's quite all right. If I'm sure when you come to America, we will funnel Oreos to you. You will change your tune. I will say I hosted an exchange student from Germany in seven years now. We took her to the grocery store one of the first times. She just wanted to, you know, experience all the American things. We turned the the down the aisle, and it was like basically the cookie and cracker aisle, but it was shelves after shelves after shelves of Oreo of every possible combination. And I never paid that close attention to it. I don't buy them all that often, but they're just always there. She was overwhelmed. She could not believe she was taking pictures. She could not believe that Americans would have that many options for their Oreos. So you really don't know what you're missing, Nate. Uh, anyway, if you follow me on um, Instagram, you would have also seen this. I uh, picked up, I don't know if I, I don't think I've seen her yet. Um, Kelly Ray Miller and uh, from Found Again For You and I basically alternated uh, picking at an estate sale. I went one day, told her how great it was. She went the next day. I then went back wanting to get some things that she had taken. And then I picked up some more stuff. Then she went back the day, next day after me, wanting things that I had found. And so this was one of the things that I had picked up. It was a little puzzle uh, that I thought was kind of cute. It was the uh, the Scottish um, uh, Scottish band, you know, basically the black watch band. Um, but I wasn't sure, 100% sure it was good because it was an older, older um, puzzle. The seal had been broken. The pieces were loose. So one of the things that I did, I uh, was sitting home alone. Um, I didn't need to sound pathetic then. I guess that's just me. Um, but anyway, I happened to be home alone. And so I decided to put this together. And it's only a six-inch diameter puzzle. But I did verify that all the, all the pieces are there. So it's cool. It's, a, it's called Tuco which I, I'm not familiar with that, but it's round. So it's a six inch diameter. 
I will say that the edges of the puzzle do not match the edges of the picture, which I found quite obnoxious because there's more of the roof in the puzzle, which I couldn't match to the picture because it doesn't exist, but I digress. Um, the way this is set up, I'm assuming this is well, the way I did the research. It looks like Tuco did this all the time. They actually give you the assembly time and it's like they're judging you from afar. So average 35 to 50 minutes, skilled is 25 to 35, genius is 10 to 20 minutes. Now, all I have to say is I was glad I had not noticed that before I put the puzzle together. I would have been completely stressed if I was trying to beat a freaking clock. Um, so by the time I'm done, I'm not going to tell you how long it took me, but you can time it yourself. All the pieces are there. I can verify all the pieces are there. Tuco puzzle, it is $5. $5 for the Tuco puzzles. Um, oh, Back to the Future 3. Oh, that's that's uh, No, that's actually the good one. The Back to the Future 2 wasn't very good. Well, thanks for joining us, Jeffrey. I'll get your, uh, your, ha your have-ite out. Um, anyway, $5 for the Tuco puzzle. $5 by giving me number 50. $5, number 50 for the Tuco puzzle. All right. Guess what? More coasters. Okay. More Christmas coasters. So these are, I'm going to say rubber. I honestly don't know what they are, but they are flexible. They're that, you know, rubbery material, again, from like the 80s, 90s. So there's a little bit of age to these. Um, they've got the non-skid surface on the back. Um, but you've got the uh, set of Christmas tree coasters. They're all identical. And it is a set of six. So you get six of these Christmas tree coasters. Set of six for four bucks. Vinyl. Thank you, Misty. That's that's easy. I'm thinking rubber. God knows why. Vinyl. Um, that still exists. Four dollars for the vinyl coasters. Four dollars by giving me number ten. Four dollars, number ten, for the set of six vinyl coasters. All right. Uh, next, I've got, I actually also combined a couple pieces that I got in multiple areas uh, to make kind of a set that made sense. Uh, and this is, well, two of, well, okay. Well, one of them is obviously for Christmas. And then the rest, you kind of have to use your imagination. So first, and sorry, Melody, they're not green, they're red. But I've got two of the red-handled uh, cookie cutters. Okay, so this is clearly, well, I'm not going to say clearly, but this I believe is Santa um, with a very squared off um, bag slung over his shoulder. But no matter how else I hold it, I don't think it's anything else. There it kind of looks like a whale, but I'm pretty sure it's a Santa. Um, being on the inside, there's a little bit more curvature. So when you cut it out, I think this does look like Santa carrying his back, his pack. This one, pretty sure, is a camel. I don't know too many people that are making nativity scene cookies because that seems pretty sacrilegious. I personally would not want to bite the head off a of baby Jesus, but maybe you can bite the head off the camel that brought the wise men. Uh, so if you decorate for Epiphany, you too can have can cookie uh, camel shaped cookies. Uh, so you've got the two wood handled ones. And then this one, admittedly, I don't know necessarily what makes these Christmas, but it says right on there that they are good for Christmas cookies. And they happen to be, uh, well, part of them anyway, the, some of the signage is German. Um, so it's a German company. A lot of the back, I guess, is German. So it's Zenker, uh, made in West Germany. So you've got this older set of cookie cutters. These do not have the handles on them. Now, some of them are relatively straightforward. You think, okay, yeah, the Christmas tree, you know, that's that would be Christmas. The shooting star Christmas. Um, this one... I don't even know what that is. Like, I don't know if you put them together and you have two angel wings, maybe. Literally do not know what that is. So, but it's, again, part of the Christmas. Um, you've got the bell. That's pretty, pretty good. I don't think heart necessarily screams Christmas. Oh, somebody's saying it's a dove. Okay. A really fat dove. But I could live with that. I could I didn't see Dove. We got anybody else? The stable. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, we do have a bell. So I think this one's the bell. So I don't think that other one would be the bell. But yeah, I want to say whoever came up with the first one that said Dove, um, or as Poodle said, it's a dive. 
Uh, oh, there's a dead. That was a dead dove. Um, so you've got the dove. I, I could actually see that turning into a dove or maybe a pigeon. Uh, but you also have a heart and then kind of like a floral. So they're saying it's for Christmas cookies. I think they're just cookie cutters. Um, but you do have this cool, and they're West German, so you definitely have some age to them. You get the entire set of West German cookie cutters plus the two with the red wood handles. All of them you get for seven bucks. So seven dollars for the full set of all the cookie cutters. Seven dollars by giving me number eighteen. Seven dollars eighteen for all of the cookie cutters. And it looks like the vinyl Christmas tree coasters went to Karen Dondelinger. Karen likes my coasters just as much as I do. So I always like when Karen picks up my co my coasters. Um, so set that to the side. Looks like we've got some takers on that. All right, I mentioned that I had other Nabisco items because it was actually a boxed lot that I had picked up. So this one I thought was kind of cool. Again, this was like all of these things came from some executive's desk. I mean, based the way it looked, because they're all these like super 80s, 90s, like what does the executive businessman put on his desk? And so this one was the Nabisco Brands Quarter Century Club from 1990. I'm assuming that's their headquarters. I admittedly don't know where Nabisco is based, but I want to say the auction that I was picking these up from was, I think, Philadelphia. So I don't know if they're around Philadelphia, maybe. I didn't really bother to look. But so you've got the headquarters. And then what this is, it's a card deck holder. So the, the cards have been opened, unfortunately. Um, so you don't have sealed decks. But the original little gold pencil is still there. Um, and they're just the standard. There's no actual Nabisco. Whoops, there goes the pencil. Um, I'll find that again before I ship it. Um, so you've got the decks. Um, they don't have like a, a Nabisco look or anything but it's really i think you're really buying the box it's from salm s-a-l-m genuine american walnut i'm assuming salm is the people either that engraved the box or made the box originally so you've got the box of two decks of cards they are open but two decks of cards with the cool uh deck box six bucks for the sets of cards six dollars for nabisco cards by giving me number 94 six dollars number 94. uh the bargain bin will probably be closer to 8 30. Um, i probably have another dozen or so regular items to sell and then i'll jump into the bargain bin so um for the cards you've got number 94 six dollars for the deck of cards since we're looking at cool boxed items i also had picked this up and admittedly my initial intention was i have um a friend that makes um macrame hangers i've actually sold them on the show before but i was in the process of moving out of the booth that she works at she was having her own issues and we never we never coordinated to know which um to be able to make the macrame hangers for these so i'm just going to sell them as the set the way i bought them they are calabash they're called calabash but they are engraved gourds so this is a box of nine comes in this cool uh, high gloss, like mahogany finish uh, box with a closure on the front. It does have the name on here saying they're, they're um, miniature carved designs on calabash with spelial care. Still don't know what that is. I think that was just English as a second language trying to say special. Um, but what they are, they're these little gourds and they still kind of have the seeds inside of them. Now, hopefully you can see them they've all been carved with these Asian designs. So you've got, you know, just kind of like a little decorative side. You've got some writing, which I have no possible chance of being able to show. Uh, you, a lot of them and most of them are showing people. So this is the next one. They are all slightly different. So they've all been carved and all of the calabash are slightly different. So like some of them, hmm. You know, some of them are slightly wider, some are slightly taller. Um, this one's kind of got the detail, some um, some trees in the background, a fairly large warrior. Well, he's holding a book, so I guess he's not a warrior. Um, but anyway, that's kind of what the style is. You've got nine of these in the presentation box. So you've got the box with the nine calabash. So you get the entire thing for, under, for 15 bucks. So not even $2 a gourd. Uh, and then you get the box for free. So $15 for the set of nine uh, Calabash in their presentation box. 
$15 by giving me number 64, $15, number 64. And number 94, the deck of Nabisco cards went to Laura Bemos. And that is exactly who I was thinking of when I picked those up. All right. Uh, next item is, should have gone into, well, let's be honest. The next item should have gone on to Etsy a long, long time ago. And it's another struggle where as I get into the larger items, I struggle a little bit sometimes to take the photographs of them. And so this one is another textile. So will not break. This is a Budapest, Hungary scarf. So it's a, definitely a souvenir piece, uh, definitely for the Western market because it's all done in clear English, but it has the, uh, basically the biggest sites around, um, the biggest sites around Budapest. So you've got the parliament building, you know, kind of is right there. Um, Fisherman's Bastion is that kind of cool building with the peak there in the middle. Um, the Royal Palace, Matthias Church. So it's one-sided because when you get to the backside, what you're seeing is the reverse of all of the images. So the, the printing is backwards. So it is designed um, to be one-sided. It is, you can, hopefully you can see it is much longer than it is tall. So it is a very strong rectangle, but it's also a very long rectangle. So as has become the common, uh, if I turn this into a scarf, I can swoop both back and hang myself with some pretty decent excess um, for the scarf. So it's a fairly decent size. Um, I do think it's a very cool piece. There are no labels or anything on it. I don't know if it's necessarily that old. There might be a little bit of age to it, but I do think it's well made. It's got a very nicely done turned hem uh, that's been stitched. It's machine stitched though. But um, based on all of the historic pieces that are on here, it's kind of hard to tell, well, when would this have been made? Sometimes you can tell if there's like a modern building or something, but these are all their older buildings. Anyway, Budapest is one of my favorite places. It's a cool place, very cool scarf. Uh, Huckster Helper hated it, so she did not want this scarf. So we've got the Budapest scarf, uh, rectangular scarf. Do not know the material. Again, there's no label on it. I don't think it's silk. I think it's probably synthetic and stuff, subtype, but it's only eight bucks. So $8 for the Budapest scarf, $8 by giving me number 32. $8, $32 for the Budapest scarf. And let's see, number 64, the uh, Calabash went to Terry Sarsanella. Okay, Terry, I think you might be a first time buyer for me. So thanks for joining. So don't forget to send me an email at the end of the sale with your shipping information so I can send you an invoice. And my email is there on the screen. Um, all right, this is going very non-vintage. Um, we're also going more local than the Budapest scarf. So this is, um, who are my Pittsburgh fans? Um, I believe Melody is from outside Pittsburgh. I shipped to Pits I shipped to Pennsylvania to several people uh, as well as Ohio. So this is for you. It is a snack cone and dip bowl for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So no, this is not vintage, uh, but it is still sealed. This is a perfect gift item, uh, either gifting to yourself or gifting to somebody who is a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. It literally reminds me of one of those things you would have gotten, you know, if you're eating at like a Buffalo Wild Wings or something. It's a place for the dip to sit in the front and a place for all of the uh, celery and carrots or French fries, let's be honest, and ketchup uh, to go into there. It does have the NFL, um, the iridescent, I can't remember the name of that type of label, but it does have the original. So this is a legit uh, Pittsburgh Steelers uh, souvenir piece. So if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, if you're, you know, or you just like snack cones, this can be yours for $4. So $4 for the Pittsburgh Steelers, $4 by giving me number 20. Okay, Nicole, yes, the Browns are good too. Um, but I'm a Bears fan, so you have nothing's good. Actually, what am I saying? I live near the Bears, so I have to be a Bears fan, but I don't follow it at all. Um, so $4, number 20 for the Pittsburgh Steelers snack cone. And it looks like number 32, the Budapest scarf went to Amy Cox. So again, I think that might be a new name. So thank you, Amy, for purchasing for me tonight. Don't forget, send me an email with your shipping information. I'll get you a uh, invoice. And you, if that's all you buy, that might be the easiest shipment I have. That's <laughs> that little silk scarf. All right. 
Uh, next item. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of who I saw in the chat. Can't remember if I've got any of my Vegas, my Vegas people here. But if you love Vegas, you're gonna love this. This is a very heavy brass, technically an ashtray. You can see at the top corner here and at the bottom corner here are like the ridges where you would put a cigarette. But technically, this has just become a massive dish. This probably weighs. I would say two pounds. I meant to, I actually meant to weigh it before I put it on. I would say this by itself weighs almost two pounds. It is a very solid cast brass um, Las Vegas souvenir piece that definitely has some age to it because of the, uh, at the casinos that it's promoting. It is none of the new casinos on here. So you've got Golden Nugget, Flamingo, Sahara, the Dunes. Um, what's that one in the back? Apache. I've never even heard of that one. Um, Sands, Desert Inn, the Stardust. You know, you've got Caesar. So you've got the you've got Old World. You've got Rat Pack, um, Vegas going on in this piece. Whether you use it for an ashtray, which would be a super impressive looking ashtray, or you just use it as a decorative piece up on a stand, or serve you serve some serve some crudite on this puppy. Um, cause it's going to, it's, it's going to hold up to no matter what you do with it. Uh, this is a, um, Vegas non-breakable, very heavy <laughs> brass dish. It is, uh, I paid up for it. So I do have to price this out at 20 bucks. So $20 for the heavy brass dish, $20. It will not break by giving me number 14, $20, number 14 for the massive brass vintage Las Vegas dish. All right. I think I fell behind on Nate's comments. So let's see. I can do this. I can, no, I cannot multitask. Come on. My phone decided to freeze up. All right. So number 20, the chip and dip cup goes to Halem Nafsif. Uh, and that is a Melody's husband. So uh, thank you, Halem. You remember you picked up, you wanted something else. I remember you were bid, you and Melody were like fighting to bid into it and you claimed it. I want to say it was the, was it the alcohol lot? Thank you. Oh, you got the schnapps pipe, if I remember right. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoy um, the chip and dip. Hope you're, and you guys are the ones that I remember you're, you're somewhat near Pittsburgh. So there you go. Glad it's heading back, heading back home. And then number 14, the Brass Vegas dish goes to Bemos Mercantile. And that would look good with all of your card collections and your poker chip collections. Um, uh, Laura, that, that's, a, that's a good addition. So glad you picked that up. All right. Uh, next one is the last. Yes, it's the last item that I have from Nabisco. Um, so this is, again, like I said, this is kind of like an executive's desk thing. This is a set of binders. Admittedly, this is why I was buying it. And then when the binders showed up, there were these little tiny binders. I thought they were the three ring binders. Like it would be like cool binders that I've got the Nabisco directory. It is a smaller binder with a uh, smaller three ring uh, in there. That's, that's the downside when you're buying from an auction. You look at the picture and it looked totally normal. Um, I needed to pay closer attention to the measurements. So, you know, you can kind of compare the size of this to a piece of paper, it's not the same. Um, so it's a little bit smaller. So as a result, I ended up getting two of the binders. They both say, ugh, sorry, that was right against my microphone, the Nabisco directory. So I got two for the Nabisco directories that are identical. I also have a Nabisco smaller um, uh, book that actually still has, it's like a notebook, but it still has the paper in it. So it has the six ring binding, which does exist. I wanna say there's a daily planner that's this size. So this would probably be usable with other types of inserts, um, but this one does still have no, blank notepads, a uh, notepaper inside of it. So it's got the Nabisco logo on it. There's a little bit of a spine, but like kind of a small, decent sized uh, notebook. And then the last one is um, the, the uh, pen holder, I no longer have the pen or I never got the pen with it. It says, whatever it takes, which kind of seems like it should be Enron's logo, not Nabisco, but you know, whatever. Um, so Nabisco brands, the biscuit division, this was dated 1985, just kind of a cool 
odd, weird Nabisco executive office set. Um, so it's kind of cool. I think this is really the money piece of it um, because I think that's this is something you could keep. And I think it would be a very cool conversation piece if you're sitting in a meeting taking notes in a Nabisco notebook. Um, but I put the entire, all four of the pieces together, put them all together for six bucks. So $6 for the four Nabisco office pieces, $6 by giving me number 22, $6 number 22. All right. Taking up a lot of space. All right. Since we're talking about brands, I'm going to throw this piece in. This is also something that should have been going, should have gone onto Etsy and just has been sitting in a box waiting to be photographed. The downside of selling online, you got to photograph everything. Um, so I'm offering them here first. I've had these for a while and just never got them listed. Uh, what these are, they're napkin rings. I'm trying to figure out the, a way to show them to you. Uh, I did a haul video on these quite a while ago, uh, so you might remember them. And we're going to do a little bit of a pop quiz because you see the logo on here. And we want to see if you know what that logo is. So you've got six of the napkin rings. They've got the open back. You've got six of them that have that logo style. And I did recognize the logo when I first saw it. So no pressure or anything. But I also had got to cheat because I'm including in the set six of those that have that logo. And then two that gets uh, Jay Nelson is the winner. Um, let me get over here. It is, con oops, grab the wrong one. It is Continental. And I was pretty sure I knew that. And then I found these actually had the Continental logo actually spelled out. So you've got six of the Continental logo and then two of the actual that say Continental. So you end up getting an, a set of eight of the napkin rings. And this is a case where I wasn't really sure the best way to do them because they were coming from an airline. It was like a, a bag, mixed bag of them. Um, so what I've gotten is I pieced together this set of eight. I actually have two identical sets. So the first, if anyone is interested in these, if more than one person wants them, the first two people that give me uh, the number, you would each get a set. They are identical, six of the Continental logo plus two of the one that say the word Continental. So you get a set of eight, six and two. Um, I put them in at two bucks a piece. So $16 for the set of eight, $16 by giving me number six. And since Nate is the one capturing, if these are popular, Nate, the first two people that claim number six uh, get the set of eight napkin rings. All right. Uh, we've got a bunch of guys on this uh, sale tonight. And even if you're not a guy, you might be buying for a guy. If your guy likes French cuffs, the set a pair of uh, probably 30s or 40s cufflinks for French cuffs. So you've got, they're the single style. So they slide in and then you've got the design, the little medallion design on the front. You've got the two, the two pieces of those. Definitely have some age to them. I'm not really sure the best way to polish them up, but I think the way they are here is exactly the way I'd want to wear them because this is what people are going to notice. Like, oh, wow, those are old cufflinks. Um, so you've got, uh, uh, French cuffs, you got French fries. So, okay, that's okay, Nicole. You, you know, you can wear these while you're eating your French fries, but it is a set, a pair of cufflinks that are six bucks. So, six dollars for the vintage cufflinks, six dollars for giving me number 39. Six dollars, number 39 for the cufflinks. Looks like no go on the um, napkin rings, that's fine. Or as uh, uh, Nate points out, there's, is it serviette? Servette, ser serviette, serviette rings. Um, that's quite all right. I will post them on eBay, which is what I was planning, or Etsy, which is what I was planning to do to begin with. Uh, all right. It looks like the cufflinks are going to Karen Dondelinger. So thank you, Karen, for picking those up. All right. I only got a couple items left. Uh, next one. If you were on one of my sales a while back, um, I had other pieces of this set. There were two of them that I had set aside to go on to Etsy. And I'm just facing reality that Christmas is coming and I still have a ton of stuff to go up on Etsy. So there's still one dish I'm gonna photograph for Etsy. It's the largest one, so the most expensive one. 
Uh, this one is kind of middle of the road. The others were specifically ashtrays. This one doesn't scream ashtray. It has the ridges. So you could say that those ridges are designed for cigarettes, but at a glance, I would say no. I mean, this is simply an enamel dish. It is an enamel dish signed by Sasha B. So you've got the signature on the piece. It is a kind of an avocado-ish green um, design, all enamel. It's in great condition. Um, there's a couple places where like the color seem to you know be a little bit off on the edge, but if you feel it, there's no chip, there's no issue to it. Um, enamel usually gets um, nicked where the enamel meets the metal. This is actually in fantastic uh, condition. So it's a beautiful piece. It is $14. So the enamel dish from Sasha B, uh, mid-century modern, probably late mid-century modern. I think the Sasha B signature was used this way until 1971. Um, $14 for the Sasha B enamel dish by giving me number nine, $14, number nine for the green enameled dish. Uh, next item, this one I just thought was super sweet. Um, I was, I did, as you might've seen a little bit of a theme, I've got ashtrays, different things. I had thing I had uh, in my booth, I had my vintage mall, I had sin carts and, um, they had alcohol, gambling, smoking, um, things weren't moving as well. So I'm, I'm moving some of that stuff onto, um, onto Etsy, but this piece never made it into my booth because it is a cigarette dish or a cigarette dish, a cigarette case. And I had meant, I bought it specifically to go into uh, my booth. However, I started discovering this as I was, the booth is relatively new. If you're new to my channel, I haven't done, you know, physical sales for very long. So it's just something I'm still getting used to. And what I was concerned about is this, when I purchased it, had this little note included in it. And I was terrified that if I tried to put this in my booth, this note would get just, uh, um, it would get separated from the case. And I really could not have handled it if that had happened. So don't make fun of me while I read. Um, so this was written uh, by the person. I mean, I, I'm not sure why it would have been stored in here, but it's, I bought this, I bought this leather cigarette case for Joe, my sweetheart, on November 18th, 1950, our one year anniversary of meeting. Isn't that ridiculously cute? Um, and then on the back side, it says, I bought this case downtown when I picked up my first pair of eyeglasses at Bell and Lewis Optical in 1950. Unfortunately, I don't know which downtown. I did purchase this in the suburbs of Chicago, so there'd probably be a fairly safe guess that she's talking about downtown Chicago, but no guarantees because obviously things move around. Um, but so this little card, you know, comes in this. It is a signed Rogers uh, cigarette case. You can see the name is right there at the cross, Rogers. And then it also is uh, signed in the middle. It says uh, made in the USA. Patented Lynn Bren, L-I-N-B-R-E-N. Um, I didn't actually look those up, so I don't know if there's any, any meaning to those, but it's a cool cigarette case. It has this little closure that slides to lock it in. Oh, yeah, theoretically lock it in place. And then it unslides to unlock it. So it's just a really cool piece. She is saying it's leather. I have no reason to disagree with her, but I also don't know. It's in very good condition though. So beautiful piece, absolutely loved it. Um, and I'm passing it on, it's only 11 bucks. So $11 for the cigarette case with the ridiculously cute note uh, from 1950. So $11 for the mid-century modern cigarette case, number 29. $11, 29 for the cigarette case. All right, uh, so let's see, number nine, the enameled Sasha B dish went to Linda Clark. So thank you, Linda. I think you also might be a new name to me. So if you can uh, make sure you send me an email with your shipping information, I would appreciate that. And oh my, everyone loved the little sweet uh, cigarette uh, holder. So I'll wait for Nate to say who is the first person to get that one. Uh, looks like I've got two items left. So, and then I'll, then the, um, and then we've got the bargain bin. So yes, I, I really did take personal responsibility to make sure that note didn't get separated. And I'm sure if I'd put that in the, in the booth, 
I think it would have gotten lost. I was thinking about taping it, but then it's like, it was double-sided. So I think I really want things to go to a good home. And this is a great way to do it because you guys are a fantastic audience. You're so supportive of me and my channel. And I love when, you know, people that really want something or really, you know, see the, the, the specialness and something. I love when it goes into somebody else's hands. So it looks like, um, yeah, so it looks like eight people were looking for the cigarette case. And we will see who Nate said was the winner of that one. Um, so, and okay, congratulations, Katie. Uh, Katie uh, from Vision Vinyl got the vintage cigarette case. So congratulations, Katie. I know you're gonna give that a good home. So I hope you uh, enjoy it. Uh, this next piece, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Deanna. Basically, no one ever says that about me. So that's very sweet. Um, most people think I'm a jerk. So this is, um, I did a little bit of research on this one. I struggled a little bit on its specific age. What this was, I just thought this was super cool. You can see this. For one cent, you could get these six coasters and a 10 and a half inch hostess tray when you purchase a one quart container of Welch's grape juice. Isn't that awesome? So this is, I mean, the I when I first, I will be honest, when I first picked this up, I was thinking it has to be reproduction because these things are in ludicrously good condition. The address is on the side, somewhere I saw it, yeah. The address on the side does not have the zip code. So that makes this prior to 1963. The fact that they're claiming these were being sold for a penny puts this probably in the 30s. And I'm thinking it was post-depression because then that would have been the thing. They would have wanted people to buy the Welch's grape juice. And in order to do that, you got this, the coasters and then whatever this, uh, what was the, the hostess tray was 10 and a half inches. I've seen it online. I've never seen the, the hostess tray live, but these puppies are in amazing condition. These can have ever been out of their box. I mean, these are in absolutely phenomenal condition. They are aluminum. They've got the reset, the like the raised part so that when your glass sits on there, the moisture won't stick the coaster to the bottom of your glass. So these are actually very well made. And you can see it's just, they're all identical designs. It's just the courting couple. Um, I don't know if I, not admittedly, I'm a Smucker's household. So I don't know if Welch's, if this is a logo they've used or like this courting couple, if that was their thing. Um, but this is uh, uh, a set of six. They're all in absolutely perfect condition. Still with the box, even the box is in pretty good condition. There's a little bit of wear. Um, and it looks like there might've been some labels or price tags or something stuck to it over time. Um, so there's a couple wear marks, but even like, just look at that. Even just putting an empty box on display would look super cool. Yes, Melody, they are, uh, I believe they are aluminum. Um, I don't know if it says what they are. No, those are recipes for the drink. But yeah, let me pull them back out again. Um, so you can kind of kind of hear. So I would say though, I would say they're aluminum. I don't think they're steel. They're not heavy enough to be steel, uh, but they're definitely metal. So I would I would vote that they are probably aluminum. Um, and I'm selling them for five bucks. So five dollars for the Welch's coasters. Uh, I have coasters all the time. See, some of them are really fun uh, and they're all usually really cheap. So $5 for the set of six Welch's uh, aluminum coasters from the giveaway. $5 by giving me number 23. $5, number 23 for the uh, Welch's coasters. Okay, and the last item from the regular sale, the last item I've got, oh my, that was popular. Um, the last item I've got is something else I get to wear because people for some reason like when I do that. Um, this is, uh, this again is not vintage. This I will absolutely 100% own up is not vintage because for those of you who've not followed my, ch my, um, channel in the past, my ex-wife and I, uh, she wasn't my ex at the time, we owned a quilt shop and the quilt shop was, uh, basically sold fabric. And one of the things that we often did was made the samples from the fabric that we got. So what this is, is an apron. So it has very long ties at the top. I'm about to cover my microphone, so hopefully you can still hear me. So very large ties at the top to go up to around your neck. So it's a full body apron. You can see the big wreath there. You've got two big pockets. 
and then very long decorative um, ties on the side. So, and you can get, see, I wore pants for this specifically. You don't always get pants. Um, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, the ties do not go all the way around. So it's definitely long enough to, again, wrap around my girth, um, but it doesn't go all the way around. So they're not like ludicrously long. Um, so that is the design. It is probably made definitely within the last 10 years. Um, most likely is it's made at least three years ago. Cause that's when we sold the shop. Um, so, but anyway, it's contemporary. It's just kind of cool. It is. Um, and it's definitely for Christmas. So it's a holiday apron. It is only $8 for the holiday apron. So $8 for the apron by giving me number five, $8, number five for the holiday apron. And, um, the Welch's Metal Coasters were super popular. They went to Trisha, Sandy, and Otto. Uh, so she is another one. I should have printed out both sides of the calendar. She does live sales as well. Drop a note in the chat, uh, Trisha, for when your live sales are. I only have the second half of the week because uh, I was going to announce these. Um, I only have the second half. So I think you might be in the beginning of the week. But Sandy and Otto has live sales as well. So 23, the Welch's Metal Coasters go to Trisha, Sandy, and Otto. And I want to remember, if I remember right, Sandy and Otto are the names of your dogs, if I remember correctly. And then and 14 people were after those. So that's good to keep in mind. And then number five, the holiday apron went to Beth at Old Stuff, Beth, Texas. Okay. So that is it for our regular sale. Uh, if there's anything that you missed and you want me to re, you know, re show, let me know. Um, but the next item coming up and I'm, you know, actually ahead of schedule. I'm trying to make these sales go a little bit slow or a little bit faster or end earlier, um, is now the uh, bargain bin. So if you've not been with my uh, sales before trustees bargain bin originally started at the very beginning and it was an opportunity to sell a large number of items quickly at a very low price. And so everything in the bin is two bucks. So when you see the item, you don't really have to worry about how much it's going to be. You will know it is $2. And uh, so all I'm going to do is when I do the bargain bin, I switch from numbers to letters. So um, I will be giving you the letters uh, for each of these items. They will be $2. And the same thing in almost all these cases, eh, there's one because it's Nate, I get to mess with his head. Um, so there's going to be one that he gets to keep track of multiples, but for the most part, it's only one item, just like everything else. So it's first to claim it's only two bucks. If you have purchased anything else from me tonight, most of these items, maybe a couple of exceptions should very easily slide in the same box. So your shipping cost will probably be nominal, uh, for others. Just keep in mind, yes, you might be buying something for two bucks, but if you've only, uh, if you're, if it's the only thing you bought, you're going to then have to pay shipping on top of that. So just keep that in mind when you're bidding. So first item, uh, because I mentioned earlier poker chips, I have a bag of poker chips. Um, I went back and forth with Laura Bemos on these, uh, even sent her some to kind of mess around with. We never really figured out what they were made of. I think they're just clay. Um, so you've got kind of white and blue. They're kind of a, a very, they're like a powdery, you know, they're kind of like a powdery feel. Uh, some of them are embossed. Some of them are also engraved with the owner's name or initials. So you have a fairly large bag um, of these. I purchased these to fill a uh, one of those carousels of poker chips. They actually, ironically enough, just sold in my booth this week. Um, this would not be enough to fill another carousel. So I'm kind of like, I just got this weird stash of um, poker chips. So two bucks. So $2 for the bag of poker chips. And you can have it by giving me letter U. Letter U um, for the poker chips. Two bucks. And next item is, guess what? Coasters. So this is kind of like DIY coasters. So this is a Jolly Santa coaster set and matching box. So this one you can kind of see on the back. It's like a balsa wood kit that has the shape of the Santa faces all carved out with the lines on them um, that you can then paint 
and put together the box to make your own set of wooden Santa coasters. So you've got a Santa coaster set, the Jolly Santa coaster set. It was originally from, yeah, there was a tag on here. So it was originally from Frank's Garden and Crafts. I don't know, that was a that was around the Chicago area. I don't know if they were nationwide or not. They don't exist anymore. Uh, so once upon a time, this was sold from Frank's for $3.39. It is made in the USA, but there's a barcode on it. So there, you can tell there's some age to these, but you know they're not super old. Uh, so you've got the coaster set for $2 by giving me letter K. $2 letter K for the coaster, the coaster kit. Next item, these actually happen to also come. I mentioned some of the items that I'd gotten from George the Antique Nomad. These are something I picked up as well. Uh, a repair of wedding portraits. So dating from the dress, I'm thinking we're looking probably the 30s because the dress did not go to floor length. Um, so if you saw my uh, deep dive with Julaine from uh, All Dressed Up Costumes, she actually talked about dress lengths and that passed the, uh, once the depression hit, they, the dresses went a little bit longer again, but not quite back down to the floor. So you've got this one, which has a massive veil uh, on this one and then with the little folder cover thingy. And then you've got this one, which the folder is a lot thicker. I don't know if that means anything, if that was like a higher quality at the time they did it, but it was kind of a, it's got a shaped cutoff. And again, her dress does not go to the floor, but check out that bouquet. Look at those pieces hanging down off of it. That to me is freaking awesome. Um, so these are just cool pieces that I picked up, really didn't know what to do with them. Still don't know what to do with them. So I'm including them. You get the pair for two bucks. So $2 for the pair of uh, vintage wedding portraits. $2 by giving me letter Z, as in zipper. $2 letter Z for the wedding portraits. And before I get too far behind, okay, it looks like K. The coaster kit went to Aaron at the Collection Vintage. And Aaron, since I'm shipping to Canada for you, this would be a case if you want me to hold on to them and combine with something later, I can, but it's getting close to Christmas. So if you want me to go ahead and ship them, I can, but I know that shipping, I'm not sure if it'll fit through the slot of doom, maybe, um, but it is uh, it is what it is. So you know that you bought from the United States before. Um, and then Z, which was the wedding photos, goes to Mid-Century Wasted. All right, so I hope you enjoy those, Jamie. And make sure you're checking out Jamie's channel. She has, um, on Sundays, she does a review of a vintage Sears catalog on Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern. So definitely uh, check her out as well. Uh, next item is kind of a fun set of children's books. It comes in uh, this little plastic um, library case says zoo books on the side it's i don't think it's complete because it has these two cutouts on here and there's really no book that fits the like shows something that fits nicely in there but the books that are included are pretty cool so you've got the um prehistoric zoo books book five out of water uh the paperback so you've got you know story Definitely a children's book, you know, for animals outside the water. Some of them are thicker than others, but you've got book three is animals and plants. Prehistoric zoo books is uh, reptiles, book six. Flyers, book eight. And then you get these cool posters uh, come in it. I love dinosaurs. Um, so it's just this like a little cool set. It's two bucks. So $2 for all these little fun books. If you've got kids, grandkids, just something, you know, you either try and shove them under the tree or just have them, you know, something for fun. I just think the case is kind of cool and the books just have some cool pictures in them. So there's $2 for the entire set by giving me letter E. $2 letter E for the zoo books. All right. Uh, next item, another book. Uh, so this one is Christmas with Southern Living in 1990. So if you want to relive 1990 Christmas decor, most of my house is probably 1990s Christmas decor. 
um, you can do so. So you've got the tablescapes. You can do it Southern living style. You've got some recipes in there to make some pies. You can go to town. Um, in great condition. It is a hardcover, uh, hardcover book. It is obviously it was published in 1990 uh, because it is Christmas for 1990 from the Oxmoor House, which I'm assuming is just who publishes the magazine. I don't know if Southern Living Magazine still exists, but you know, I'm you most people are familiar with it. So it's Christmas book or Christmas decorating book. Christmas Southern Living 1990, two bucks. You can get it by giving me letter S, two dollars letter S for the book. Uh, it looks like the uh, zoo books went to Terry Sarsinella. So thank you, Terry, for picking those up. Um, I can't remember if you had picked up something else before. If you haven't, these can probably, these can go media mail. Oh, no, you did. You picked up something else, too. The box of gourds. These will pack together nicely. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you for picking up the zoo books. The... Christmas book is letter S also for $2. All right, I got to keep Nate on his toes. So the next item I've got, I have a grand total of nine. So I'm taking it easy on you, Nate, because I've been working you to the bone. So these are vintage finger press appliques, no sewing, self-stick. Now, they were probably self-stick when they were made. <laughs> I wouldn't guarantee they're still self-stick. Um, I couldn't really tell from the back background exactly when they were made. The address on the back does have a zip code, so it's after 1963. I'm guessing 70s, maybe 80s, but I can't imagine much later than that because these only sold for 79 cents when they were new. Um, so what these are is I'm going to say there's only nine. Uh, yes, Nate, you can, and you, I know you can count that high. Um, so what this is, it's going to be a grab bag style. Tell me what you get. You will get one of the nine that I have because I have multiple designs. Some of them are duplicates. If you want more than one, just put the letter in more than once and we will just grab, Nate will grab the first nine, uh, the first nine people that he sees claiming the next letter. But just showing you what you've got, I've got one of the, the angry Santa with his hands on his hips. I've got a couple of the stockings. So I've got this stocking, the same one, that stocking. This one is a pair. You get these little bells with the holly leaves on there. Uh, so you get a pair in this one. Again, these were all originally 79 cents when they were first made. You've got uh, several of the single bell. So you've got three more of the, the single bell and then another of the double. And then we've got one that gives you a pair of Christmas trees. So if you've never purchased through the grab bag before, um, literally the way this works is you just say you want one. I, as I fill your orders, I just randomly grab out of the stack and you get one, uh, get one of them. So they're $2 a piece. So if you want any one of them, or if you want more than one, just type in the letter V. So you put in the letter V as many times as you want. The first nine people that claim with a V will get the nine finger press appliques that I have. All right. Only a handful of things left. Um, unfortunately, I haven't seen Corey at a at one of my sales in a while. I know uh, she was taking a break for a while. Um, I picked these up with her in mind and uh, just kind of a fun little you know, vintage piece. It is uh, a box of artist charcoal and it is filled with artist charcoal. So I just think it's a very cool box. And the fact of the matter is there's all the charcoals are actually in there. Now, what I think this is, is this used to only have 24 pieces in there. This I think is just what the artist probably used to stockpile the little nubs of charcoal that he, had le he or she had left and just kind of became this massive box of charcoal. You know, not really, again, not sure there's a huge amount of value to it. I think the graphics on here are pretty cool. It's a cool vintage artisty piece. Um, and I'm selling it for two bucks. So $2 for the artist charcoal from Groombuckers. Uh, just kind of a cool little item for letter Q. Letter Q for the artist charcoal. So it looks like the uh, finger press appliques were pretty popular. So I'm going to take pity on um, my, my five screens that I've got going here. Let's see if I can figure out what uh, if I can see. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. 
Yes, I see an ad. Um, if I can figure out who all the V's were. So I am showing Karen Dondelinger, Brooke Lagan getting two of them, Serendipity by Melanie getting one, Polly's Projects getting one. Oh, and then Serendipity by Melanie getting three more and Polly's Project getting one more. So Karen gets one, Brooke gets two, one, two, three, four for Serendipity and two for Polly's Projects. And it looks like Nate saying the same thing. So there we go. So we are agreeing to that. So that was all of the uh, finger press appliques. So thank you for picking those up. I just thought those were fun. I thought it was a fun way to sell them. Um, so I'm glad you, I hope you guys like those. I think it's cool to do the, the, the grab bag again. Oh, and I will also throw this out there because they don't break. Anybody that wants, I, well, let me put it this way. If you have purchased anything from me this evening, if you would also like a uh, one of the boxes of vintage maxi pads, uh, those are also $2 a piece, um, just put MP in the notes and I will grab those as well. I, unless you're gonna buy a lot of them, I don't wanna really have to ship one, but if you want a box of vintage maxi pads, which is why Nate breaks into a sweat every time um, I end up doing anything as a group uh, sale, because the first time I sold the maxi pads, I had 243 of them um, and a lot sold. So if you just want the, just for fun, it, I still have some. So if you're looking for a gag gift or just kind of a cool, uh, eighties, seventies, eighties, I should have grabbed one, but, um, they're kind of uh, legendary at this point. So if you want your own maxi pad, if you bought anything else, they can slide into that box. It'll probably weigh almost nothing. Uh, they're two bucks. So I can, uh, I can throw that into the mix for you. Um, and then did we have a taker on Q? Yes. Q went to Suzanne McLean. So thank you, Suzanne, for picking those up. I will put those uh, at the booth. Um, uh, and actually, I will mention that the this weekend, uh, both Suzanne McLean, Suzanne runs number 17 vintage on Instagram. She has a booth at the same vintage mall that I am at. And on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, so 10 a.m. Central, which is the store's local time, Suzanne and I will be there. We will be running another sale on my channel. So we will be doing a, a live sale from the Rustic Fox. It will start at 11 a.m. Eastern at the, uh, at the Rustic Fox. I'll be selling from all of the vendors, selling only Christmas decor and only vintage Christmas decor. You might get some vintage inspired because there's a lot of people that do that too, but we're gonna try and be sensitive to make sure we only are selling, primarily selling just vintage Christmas. So if you like vintage Christmas and you still have room for more when you do your decor, be sure to uh, check out my channel on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and you can see Suzanne will be helping me out and we will be doing some Christmas. Um, all right. Speaking of Christmas, I got one more, another Christmas item. This is a German set of candles. So you've got Baumkürzen. I think I might have offered these in a sale earlier and I would priced them too high and they didn't sell. Um, so I'm putting them in the bargain bin. They're $2. There are... Supposed to be 20 in here. There are no longer 20 candles. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're little, there's little candles. So like if you've got those little, um, the little like spinner things where you light the candle and the heat spins it, like this is the height for that. They actually show them going on your Christmas tree. So if you've got a death wish and you want to light your Christmas tree, go for it. Um, but it's just, you can see Baum, Kurtzen, uh, it's a box of German Christmas candles and they're two bucks. So $2 for the red Christmas candles, the seven that are left in the box. But personally, I think the box is pretty cool too. Um, $2 by giving me a letter L, $2 L leaf for the red candles. Oops. All right. Um, I lied. I said earlier, I had no more Nabisco things. I forgot I'd put one Nabisco item in the uh, bargain bin because this is another coaster, is a brass coaster. It's not in the best of shape. You can see it's definitely had some oxidation because it's gotten uh, it's gotten moisture on it over the time, over time. but it's still, it's the uh, NAB pack. So it's the political action group uh, from Nabisco. So I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, it's coming in after the election, uh, you know, after the election, but that this is, a very, I've, I've worked for big companies and their political action committees are real things. And so this was a commemorative coaster from NABPAC. 
So if you like uh, political action groups or you just like Nabisco, you got the Nabisco logo on there. It's another $2 coaster, $2 for the letter C, $2 letter C for the NAB pack coaster. And it looks like letter L, the Christmas candles went to mid-century wasted. So add those to Jamie's box when I send the pictures. Um, Got to be able to read my handwriting when I'm done. All right. Only a couple more things in here. I can't remember who the strawberry fans are. I'm kind of out of, out of season at this point. But I've got this little decorative wooden spoon that is a got the little red gingham ribbon on there, um, basically designed to hang on a wall. It's got a little bit of a hanger. Uh, that's where the, the ribbon got attached. So you've got this old school um, wall hanging, little wooden spoon, two bucks, two dollars for the little um, strawberry decorative wooden spoon by giving me a letter D, D for dog, for the little wooden spoon. All right. Good night, poodle. All right. Um, what else I got in here? Oh, I've got a couple fun things left. One, this is, I don't think I saw Fat Bird Finds on here. Um, so the wooden spoon is letter D. That goes to Stacy Brinkley. So thank you, Stacy, for picking that up. I'll add that to your other shipment. Um, I don't think I saw Fat Bird Finds on, but I know that um, Mary Beth loves little circus items. I thought this was kind of cute. It's just a little pewter elephant raised up on kind of like a little platform that I'm assuming it is a elephant, like a circus elephant. Um, its trunk is up. So for all of you who are prejudiced and want a happy, good luck or, uh, elephant, you can have the trunk up. Me personally, I like the elephants that have the downtrodden trunk, um, the, the ones in need of Viagra. No, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, yes, bonus elephant. Didn't even think of that. So we've got the little pewter circus elephant. He's two bucks. So $2 for the little circus elephant, $2 by giving me letter X, $2 letter X for the little, uh, Elephant. Uh, these resurrected from a sale. I had a jewelry sale months ago. These were the pieces that were left over. If you too want to recreate your David Cassidy look, uh, you've got the puka shell necklaces. These are the long uh, necklaces. Uh, let's see. So X was the circus elephant. And it looks like that went to Jean Marie. Thank you, Jean Marie, uh, for picking that up. So this is a set of three individual long necklaces. The set of three is two bucks. So you want, you know, Halloween is over, but who says you need to be Halloween to to jam out your uh, puka shell necklaces? So you got the three necklaces for two bucks for letter G. G two dollars for all three of the shell necklaces. And uh, last item was something that I originally had picked up because, you know, we all do this. You, saw, you see something, you think, oh, I'm going to do a project. It's not going to be a hard project. It'll be fun. I was wrong. Um, so what I have are these cool, in my opinion, these cool um, trophy toppers. Now, these are the old style metal ones. So these are not plastic. So these are heavy duty uh, old ones. So you've got the man with the laurel, uh, re you know, laurel leaves ahead. You've got the winged victory female figure. And they all have the little, you know, the little pedestal on there that you would mount this to something. And then there's also this little one that actually has the screw in this because this would have gone into the wood. So usually something like this probably would be like a big tower next to it. And then this would kind of be sitting you know, like a little guard guardian. Um, what I have anticipated doing with these is I wanted to take tidbit trays and turn this into the top of the tidbit tray. I don't have a lot of tidbit trays available. And so it was a case where I don't, I, this sometimes was too long. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, if you want to put it as a hood on it, you absolutely can in that. But these are, because of their straight, these were a trophy. Um, trophy mascots as opposed to car mascots, but they're still very cool. They're all metal. 
I'm just going to sell them as a set for two bucks. I think it basically is begging to be a cool project. If you can make the tidbit tray, like this becomes the holder of the, the center ray handle of a tidbit tray. I just think that would look cool, but who knows? You could do any, you can do whatever you want with these because I'm selling all three of them as a set for two bucks. So you need to, if you have a good project, you know, the metal trophy holder or trophy toppers, all three of them for two bucks, forgive me, letter O, $2, letter O for the octopus. Um, I had a question of whether number letter C sold. Uh, no, it did not. C was the um, Nabisco political action group, uh, political, political action committee coaster that had not sold. Um, so O is the trophies. Looks like we're going to have a taker on those. Let Nate get the fresh, let him refresh it. Um, so O goes to Linda Clark. And then it looks like Teamster is asking for letter I. I do not remember what letter I was. Teamster, if you want to remind me, a couple of my cards fell off the items and I don't see an I. So remind me what I was and we can verify, Nate can verify whether it was still available. Um, because when I do these, I'm pulling the letters as I go so I don't have them pre-written, which is probably stupid, but I don't. Um, so I apologize, I don't know what letter I was. Uh, so if you could clarify that Teamster, I would love to, um, if it's available, I would love to make it available for you. Uh, and Teamster is relatively new to the vintage uh, world and he was, um, he was one of the people who donated one of Kim's uh, mystery boxes. So, and he would did that very early on and I really appreciate that. Uh, so definitely if you're not following Teamster, uh, T E E T E E T E E M S T I R, you can see it in your chat. Um, so he was going after letter O. So Nate has to verify whether Teamster got the trophies or if that still went to Linda Clark. Um, but if you said I, we have to go with what the, or, you know, I, it looks like Linda got those. Um, yeah, so Nate clarified. Sorry, Teamster, you, you missed out on O. Somebody just asked for C. Um, so T went to went to Terry Sarsanella. Uh, so I can add that to your, um, I can add that to your package as well. So that's the, that was what I always had envisioned the bargain bin would be is that you've already bought something, yeah, something for two bucks, you can slide in there. Most of the times they don't weigh much. Um, so I appreciate when people um, do actually are able to pick that up and add them to other items that they uh, picked up. In the case of Jamie, she only picked up bargain bin items, but that's okay. She picked up multiple, so those also get combined. Um, so we, we be good. And that is it. The bargain bin is empty. So unless there's anything that, oh, hi, Mrs. E, welcome. Sorry you missed most of it, um, but thank you for joining us. Um, as I was, had been mentioning throughout the evening, I do have a calendar. Uh, before I go into that, for anyone who claimed an item tonight, just make sure if you've never bought from me, you must send me an email. So send me an email to the address that's on the screen with your shipping information. Because even though I can see you on the screen now, I can't click on you. I can't, re I can't search you. I have no way of reaching out to you. So unless you send me an email and give me your email address, I can't do anything. For the rest of you who've purchased from me before, if you want to send me an email, I always appreciate them, but I do go through as the evening goes on. That's why I appreciate Nate. I keep track of everything that's sold and who it's sold to so that I can then go through this. And usually I don't even need the email because I know what you bought. I know what number you bought. I know some people feel bad. Like, oh, I don't remember what number it was. You don't need to tell me what number it is. I know what number it was. Um, so if you haven't bought from me before, please make sure you send me an email. Um, if you are just exploring the Vengeance community, you know, check out Teamster. He's one of the newer ones. Uh, but coming up, again, I mentioned Angela Marksberry uh, posted this calendar. So I'm the last event for a Thursday evening, but tomorrow we've got Doggone Happy Vintage, does her sales at 3 p.m. Eastern. The niche lady, uh, she's from Las Vegas. Uh, she does her, Danny does her sales at 4 p.m. Eastern. Crafty Jackie ships out of Indiana. She does 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Real Nifty Vintage, Jeffrey was on earlier. He does, um, normally he does 8 p.m. Eastern, but tomorrow he's doing a half an hour early. Um, so he's doing 7.30 Eastern uh, will be Jeffrey at Real Nifty Vintage. And Fatbird finds, unless somebody had, I didn't see anyone else mention it, 
I think theirs is still at 10 p.m. Eastern. Even though Jeffrey's a half an hour early, I think Fatbird finds us, they're flipping and sipping, they'll still be at 10 Eastern. And it is definitely something I look forward to all week. I miss some of them, but it's just fun. It's a hangout. They do sell some items. Um, they play games. It's just, it's a really fun night. And it's a great way to meet a lot of other members of the vintage community. Saturday, we've got Maria from California Thrifter, uh, D Thrill of the Thrift, Vintage. Ooh, I don't think Vintage Vinny is doing his sale this week. Uh, he does sometimes on Saturdays, but I think he's skipping his. Uh, Pamela Blanchard is, is Saturday night. And if Kim is still here, she might have posted earlier, Kim is opening up all of her, or a good number of her mystery boxes that she's received. Uh, she received over, she's receiving over 30 of them as a winner of the Just One More Docs and Rescue fundraiser. Uh, so she might be doing multiple videos, but she is doing her video on Saturday. And I'd asked her earlier, but I don't remember seeing her answer. Um, I want to say it was 5 p.m. Eastern, but that's on her channel. Oh, my vintage is uh, her channel. She's not a reseller, but definitely check out because again, over 30 resellers donated these mystery boxes. I have no idea what got donated. I literally have no clue. Everyone shipped directly to Kim. So this will be a surprise for everybody. So definitely check that out. Um, and then... Check out my channel again on Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern. I'll be doing a live sale on location at the Rustic Fox where I'll be selling from the booths of multiple vendors. Uh, and then I also have a, um, my next deep dive is not this Sunday, it is next Sunday, but just keep that in mind. I will be doing a deep dive on Sunday the 13th uh, on vintage fountain pens um, and also ballpoint and rollerball, but primarily fountain pens. So if you're into that, I will have... Um, a specialist in pens on my deep dive on Sunday the 13th. So thanks everyone for joining. Again, send me an email if you have any questions, if you ever wanted to see anything that didn't sell, I sometimes will post them on my Instagram channel. Again, th, th Mercantile is my Instagram. I'll sometimes show a couple of the items that didn't sell during the sale. So you can pick things up there. Uh, otherwise, I just appreciate you giving me your time, hanging out in the sale. Definitely check out all the rest of the vintage community. And thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Have a great night, everybody. And thanks a lot, Nate. Really appreciate your help. Talk to y'all later. Bye.